Hey guys, Lucky Madman here, bringing to you some Genshin Impact content, hopefully some stuff that may help you out trying to understand the game, especially if you're new to the game. Um, I've been playing Genshin for about a week now, it's been out for about 10 days I believe, um, and I wanted to share my learnings to those to those of you who are trying to get into the game to especially get started. Some of the, some of the aspects, if you do come from a gacha playing background, this video may make more sense because I do come from a gacha background and I want to share my experiences with you to be able to help you understand certain aspects of this game a lot better. Um, a little bit about myself for the guys that may be new to the channel. I have been playing Summoner's War, um, a mobile based gacha game for probably the last six years and I've just started Genshin Impact as I said about a week ago and I've been trying to put all my learnings and understandings from other games into this and trying to catch up to people relatively quickly. Um, I'm going to be breaking into AR 33 today, Adventure Rank 33. Um, and I just want to share my experiences with you and hopefully you guys can try and catch up. If this video helps you and you want to, you guys want to see more Genshin Impact content from me in the future on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment below. Please subscribe to my channel and please like this video so we get recognized a bit more for it, okay? So, um... The areas of this video that I want to cover off the, when it comes to the game is I want to cover off summoning. Seems like the biggest area that people want to focus on when it comes to gachas. Um, the characters themselves, uh, which will include a section about weapons, uh, artifacts, or gear, or equipment, or runes, whatever other game you've played, specific areas of the maps, um, and a limited energy source that you may need to use uh, to make sure that you're not letting it just keep it full. Um, and other relevant information that you might find uh, helpful. So that's what's going to be covered off in the video. I'll try to ti timestamp it for you guys so you guys can scroll through it a lot easier. And we'll be able to find that content for yourselves. Okay. So guys, the first thing I want to talk about to you guys is about characters. Okay. So characters have uh, specific components. And we'll go through each of these components and I'll explain to you what they mean. Okay. So before we cover off that high level, there are a total of six elements in the game. Okay, there is Anemo, which is Wind, Geo, which is Earth, Electro, which is Lightning, Hydro, which is Water, Pyro, which is Fire, and Cryo, which is Ice. If you want to know what your character's uh, type is, you will see it up in the top left corner. So Deluc is Pyro, Venti is Anemo, Barbara is Hydro, Raz is Electro, and so on. You can go through all your characters and have a look, and it'll tell you what their element type is. That is very important because you want to be able to understand what their main attribute is. So keep that in mind when you are going through. Um, you want to try to have one of each, ideally, because there's going to be areas of the game where you're going to need to have one of each. Um, so that's something to, to look out for. The next area is weapons. So there are multiple types of weapons. There are swords, which have like a medium attack speed and damage. There are bows, which are obviously your ranged uh, pole arms. There are claymores and catalysts. So claymores are two-handed weapons, catalysts are like your magic attacks. So each character has a specific type of weapon that can be applied to them. So for example, Deluc, he can only have claymores. As you'll see over here, it'll tell you that the, he can only have claymores or two-handed weapons. All right. If I go to my Venti, as you can see, he's already carrying a bow. So it'll tell you he's a ranged character. Okay. So that's something to consider as well. Um, each character has their own sort of weapons that they can use. Okay. So keep that in mind. Um, you can't actually use a... Claymore, for example, on a character like Venti. It doesn't work that way. Each character will have their own specific weapons. So keep that in mind when you are looking at characters and you're looking at the type of weapons available that you have and looking at their skill sets before putting on a weapon on them. So it's something to consider there. The other aspect of weapons is they have their own leveling system as well. So weapons have a base starting point. Let's have a look at basic weapon first. Let's pick up on any of these three stars. You'll see they start off at level one and none of the stars are highlighted. Okay. So each weapon will have their own sort of main stat, which is usually a base attack. And then they'll have a um, another ability below it. So this one here has crit damage. This one here is HP. This one here has crit rate. This one here has crit damage again, and so on. So you can go through and have a look. Um, and then the other aspect of the weapons is a refinement. So each weapon has a specific ability. So for example, for this one here, for the slingshot, it has this, if a normal attack or aim shot hits a target within 0.3 seconds of being fired, it increases your damage, right? One thing you can actually do in this game is refining them. Um, so if you click into the enhanced tab, it'll tell you what you can do. So here's your basic information of your weapon once again. 
The enhancing tab allows you to level up your weapons by using other weapons. And the refining tab allows you to feed the double of the weapon to increase the quality of the refinement. So as you can see here, before it was 36% damage increase, now it becomes 42 with one usage, right? Refinements currently go up to level 5. And I think early on, trying to cap out your refinement, especially if you're using 3-star weapons, it's relatively easy to do. As you can see in my storage, there's a lot of dupes. So you can refine a weapon pretty easily, and I think it's worthwhile to try to cap out on what your ability of your weapon is. Weapon leveling and ascending is very important as well, so it allows you to get your base damage up through your weapon, as well as increases the below component as well. So for example, um, so for example, this level 10 weapon here, the Sharpshooter's Oath, if I went down to uh, what it looked like here, Sharpshooter's Oath has 39 attack and 10.2% uh, crit damage at level 1. This one at level 10 has 65 and 13.9%. Okay, so it has a little bit of an increase. As you can see, it's almost double the base attack. It's relatively important. Um, and I refined it up to level 3. So if I went through, since I, I may as well show this as a live example, I can go in and I can refine my weapon. As you can see, it goes to 42%. And refinement level 5 maxes out refinement level 5, increases damage against weak spots by 48%. That's a pretty cool effect, so something to keep in mind as well um, when going through the game. So that is something to look out for. The next area is artifacts. Okay? Artifacts are like your gear or your equipment when it comes to the game, and it's a very important component. Because this is where you get most of your additional stats on top of your base stats from. So definitely keep that in mind when you are going through. Um, the areas to look out for here is some of the base elements. So what I'm going to do is cover off here some of the base elements. You'll see that there are flowers and there are plumes here. Flowers will always have a base hate, sorry, a main stat flood HP. And plumes always have a main stat flood attack. Okay? So that's all you can get from that area there. Um, for your Sands of Eon, your Goblet of Enothem, and your Circlet of Logos, they'll have specific stats that you can look for. Sands. Um, so Sands, Goblets, and Circlets is what, how I refer to them. They will always have attack percent, HP percent, defense percent, and elemental mastery as the main stats you can get in all three of those slots. So you can kind of stack all attack, all HP, all defense, depending on the character. Um, but then the, there are specific ones that you can obtain in each. So Sans has energy recharge, which is actually good for units that, that, want it, that you want to cycle back into their elemental burst skills. You also have goblets, which can get elemental burst damage. Um, oh, sorry, elemental damage in general bonus and physical damage bonus, okay? Circlets also uh, can get you a crit rate or the chance a crit goes higher. Crit damage, which is increasing your damage multiplier when you do land a crit uh, a crit hit. Or healing bonus, which amplifies the power of your heals on your characters. When you get a certain amount of um, artifacts on, on your units, um, there are specific sets you can complete. So, for example, you see over here on my, um, on my Venti, you'll see it has a Berserker set for two set pieces. There are... It gives me an additional 12% crit rate. When you complete a four set, it gives you an additional 24 Okay, if you are below 70% HP. So, completing two sets and four sets, I think early on isn't as important. I think you want to st uh, chase stats. Um, but ideally, when you start getting towards the later end of the game, you want to start completing as many sets as possible. So, if I go back to my Venti, he's on a Berserker and an Instructor set. Because I use them to really pair up with uh, Deluc to be able to do a lot of elemental base skills together. And the crit rate's relatively important, so I can keep doing higher crit skills. So, that's the way that one works. Um, so that covers off artifacts. Um, leveling up artifacts, sorry, there is one more component. Leveling up artifacts is something that I should cover off as well. To be able to level up artifacts, you go into, into the enhanced section and you can, you only, the only way to level them up is by using other artifacts that you've found along your way. So it's kind of one of the harder resources to find. And so be careful when you are leveling up artifacts. You want to be happy with the artifacts you are leveling up. Um, so keep that in mind when you are going through the game. Um, next area to look at is constellations. So constellations is where your dupes end up going. So dupes, short for duplicates. When you are summoning monsters, um, the area you want to look out for here is 
um, when you do summon dupes, you have to go through this constellation process. So you'll end up with an item called a so-and-so's name, Stella Fortuna, which is effectively a constellation activation material, as it says there. It allows you to go through the constellation. So if you summon six dupes, you get all of these. So summoning six dupes seems like quite a lot for a natural five star. But you can get quite a lot of those when you're summoning um, uh, four stars in general. So when you do a 10, 10 summon, you get a natural four star, which we'll look at summons after this. But um, when you go through each of these areas, it'll tell you what each benefit is for every dupe you get. So it's something worthwhile looking into if you do summon dupes. Or if you're looking at trying to max out a character, sometimes uh, chasing dupes can make your character a lot stronger than what it is right now. Okay? So that's something to look out for. Next area is talents. Now, talents are your skills of your character. Normal attack is usually your left click on keyboard and mouse. Um, Skyward Sonnet, in this case, is my elemental skill attack, which is my E. And then this is my Q, which is my elemental burst attack. So one thing you'll notice here is got certain levels mentioned here, which means you do have the uh, ability to level them up. And you'll see that there is talent level up material you can also farm to be able to do that. So it's specific days, similar to like weapon ascension, character ascension. You'll see that there is a requirement if you want to level it up, you can. You just have to farm specific items. You'll notice that usually one item will be a, um, a level up material. The other would be something that you can farm um, in the world map, in the general map. So have a look at those. Find out where they're located and start farming them up if you do want to capitalize on those. So for every ascension level, you do unlock a new um, a new level for your for your talent. So keep that in mind. You can actually read into the benefits of leveling them up when you actually click into the level up. It'll tell you what it does. So as you can see, it's mainly damage increase. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Okay, so that covers off characters. Now, the main question everyone wants to know is, how do I get these characters? Well, if you actually click on escape, there is a wish button here, or the other option is pressing F3. Okay, you hit F3. It takes you to the character event wish area. And there are specific currencies available for this. You'll see down here, I have intertwined fates. These are used for you to summon a limited item or limited character. As you can see, this is a limited banner for Venti right now that ends in 11 days. There is also a weapon banner that also ends in 11 days. Um, and then here's the standard wish and these are called acquaint fates So those are the two forms of currency to be able to summon if you don't have enough So right now you can see I've got uh, only one of these if I want to summon ten It'll tell me to use primo gems primo gems are like your pay to win currency in this game And it costs 160 of that currency to do one summon. Okay, so that's like your premium currency You can still find them as a free-to-play player opening up chests doing quests you do get quite a lot of them um, they are very important, so you might want to resource manage that a bit better. Um, but I think, especially early on, you do want to do some summons so you can build some sort of character base to be able to, um, capitalize on the skills that you can use with specific units. So, um, yeah, so that's the two forms of summoning currency, so keep that in mind. Um, you do come across quite a lot of Primo Gems early on in the game. But towards the end, it starts getting a lot harder. So keep that in mind. I did a few summons yesterday. Didn't really go too well. Um, I kind of regret it. But I had like five or almost 6,000 Primo Gems. So I was like, you know what? I could do a few summons. I've been very um, diligent with how I've been using them. So I just thought, let's treat myself. And uh, you know what? It might have been better holding up to 6,000 Primo Gems for like refills, which I could do now. So that's characters, right? How to get characters, the components of a character. The next thing I want to talk about that might help you guys out early on is um, areas of the map, okay? So I'm going to talk about certain areas of the map. So this is the world map. If you hit M, that's how you open up the screen. And as you can see, I've cleared, I've opened up the entire map. Some of you guys may only see the Mondstadt area, which is this area up here. But if you've uh, progressed further into the game, you'll start opening up Liu Wei, which is the next area of the game as well. So there's a lot of symbols around the map, right? And you might be thinking, oh my god, what is this? Because there's a lot going on here. I'm going to quickly break it down for you guys. These symbols here are teleport, uh, teleport waypoints. You'll need to actually unlock these before you can use them. So you need to start doing a map clear to be able to find those. Um, if your map is completely blanked out, it's because you haven't actually found the statues. Now the statues of seven is like a uh, prayer point. Um, it, within this game, there are seven gods in this game, 
And right now in this game, there are only two areas or two gods that we've been exposed to, which is a Nemo and Geo, uh, the Geo gods, um, or Archons they refer to. So there, those are um, those are the area. So that that's the uh, Nemo one. The Nemo is all throughout Monstat, and then Geos are all throughout um, throughout the Liyue area. So. Those are what these symbols are, and that, that will actually open up your map. So, if you want to do something first, it might be to go to each of these statues when you can, and open up your map. Uh, don't be worried if you can't open up Storm Terror's lair early, because that's kind of um, towards the end of the first act of the game. Um, so, you might get locked from going into here, but you should be able to get all the other ones when you first start the game. Then get all the telepoint points, because you kind of want to be able to move to these sections a lot easier. So you might need to venture out a little bit and actually open up all these telepoint waypoints. And then the other symbols you'll see across the map here is um, other bosses. And now I'll talk about these in a bit more detail, but uh, you'll see that these, there's certain things that you can do. Okay? So in the game, the, the Statues of the Seven, as we already spoke about, um, they give you additional effects when you, um, when you uh, provide them with these things called um, um, Oculuses. Okay, I'm going to call them Oculuses short. Because the Animoculuses, which you give to the um, Anemo uh, Archon. And then there's Geoculuses, which is what you give to the uh, Geo Archon. Okay? There are 65 Animoculuses uh, throughout the Mondstadt area. Then there's 130 Geo ones without the Liyue area. The more of them you give, the more higher your statue level becomes. The more stamina bar you get. Now, stamina is really important in this game. Because you do a lot of climbing, right? So, if I give you an example. As you can see, that yellow bar is my stamina bar. And mine's relatively bigger than uh, you would initially start with. So you've got to keep that in mind when you are playing this game. Um, and it, it is used for climbing. It is used for gliding. It is used for swimming. It's used in a lot of areas of the game. So you want to keep an eye on that. It's also used for sprinting, uh, sidestepping attacks. So keep that in mind when you are playing. Because it's, uh, it's a pretty big, uh, it's a pretty big impor uh, importance when you, are, when you are in certain fights. So keep that in mind. Um, so that's Statues of the Seven. Right, we spoke about the waypoints. I won't talk about those. Those are relatively easy, so I can teleport there if I wanted to. Um, the next areas that you want to look out for are these things called ley lines. So, this is what a ley line looks like. And same here, there's two of them. So, there's Blossom of Wealth. And these cost these 20 of these Moon Crescent shaped things, right? These Moon Crescent shaped things are known as resins. And they're a limited resource, right? So, it takes a certain amount of time to be able to replenish them. Um, and they are a limited resource, so you kind of don't want to sit on them at being max. So keep that in mind. Um, so when you do these uh, quests, you also get a, uh, adventure experience, which is quite valuable late game because it comes very hard to come by. And you be get to a point where you get level locked, which means you can't actually progress without actually farming things like this to be able to get adventure experience. So the Blossom of Wealth allows you to gain, obtain, uh, get more Mora, which is like your common currency in the game, which is like the free to play currency then there's the prim uh, the, the primo gems which is like your premium currency so whereas over here this gives you uh, character experience material so these books you can use to be able to level up your characters so pretty important resources keep in mind that um if you were to farm these it is purely just to be able to get basic resources it doesn't really help you ascend characters. It will help you level up characters, that's for sure. But it won't help you ascend characters, your talents, or your um, or your yeah, characters, talents, um, or like level up your artifacts. So those are the core areas you'll kind of want to focus on. Okay. Um, there is a button you can click down here, which says, oh, "I'm blocking it for you guys," but it says it down at the bottom that it's it allows you to see domains only. So you'll see weapon ascension materials are farmable here. You can get artifacts here, talent level up material here, and so on. So when you clear the map, it kind of helps you uh, see what you need to go to if you want to see it without clicking into it. So you can have a look at it that way as well. Um, it's pretty cool. But if you want to see the rest of the map, you click back. Okay? So the next area is domains. Domains are the areas where you can look for weapon or talent ascension material or artifacts. So the stuff that you put onto your characters... These are the areas you need to farm to be able to improve that, improve those aspects. So weapon ascension materials allows you to get the stuff to ascend your weapons to the next star rank. Talent ascent, uh, level up material also allows you to level up your skills. And then artifacts are obviously like your equipment. So you'll see in each area, there'll be specific ones you can farm. And that'll be based on what you, uh, what, what sets you want to look for based on the area. So 
Over here, you'll see it says Traveling Doctor, which increases your healing. Um, Tiny Miracle, which increases your res. Over here, Midsummer Courtyard, you'll get Adventure, which increases your max HP. Uh, Sojourner, which increases your base attack. And so on. So have a look at those areas and see what sets you want to complete. Um, and then Talent, Level Up Material, pretty straightforward. It's a, it, it, it does change daily, so you might want to be very careful about which day you farm. Because you can't just farm it any day, right? You might be leveling up a specific character, so you want to look and see which character, which character's books you can level. If you want to know more details about which character, what day you need to farm, you can always go back to this screen, and you can have a look. Let's say if I, for example, I wanted to work on my Barbara, and I wanted to work on her talents, I would be, I would have to farm uh, Monday or Thursday server time at the Frosted Altar. So I can click on that. Uh, well, I guess I can't. So I mean. I can click on that and it will tell me, look, Frosted Altar is where I need a farm. So I can look for I can look for Frosted Altar on the map. And that's where I'll that's where I'd go and farm it. Okay? That's that is essentially what domains are. Domains also cost 20 resin, like the ley lines, and it gives you an additional 100 uh, adventure experience as well as some sort of mora and companionship experience. Okay? The next area of the map that's very important are these um, these bosses. Okay? The elite bosses. They all have specific names. So you'll see the cubes on the map. You'll see these regis vines on the map. And you'll see... Those are those are the main sorts of bosses. If you needed a summary of all this information, you can also press F1. In your adventures handbook, you can actually go down to bosses. Here's the ley lines. You'll see some um, normal world bosses. If you scroll down, here's your elite bosses. And it tells you that it will cost you 40... Resins to be able to fight these bosses, but this is this is where you get your character ascension material Okay, so to be able to ascend the character you'll real you'll see in here that you need to farm Those elite bosses to get these aspects the first two aspects is what drops from the bosses then the next two is what drops uh, in, the, in the map, okay? So keep that in mind. So there'll be a specific boss you'll need to farm so animo uh, Hypothesis is what I need to farm for venti as you can see, it's got the butterfly wings and it's also got these uh, the chunks as well. It cost me 40 resin. As you can see, there's, there is a trend here with adventure experience. 20 resin gets you 100 adventure experience. 40 gets you 200. And later on, when we see the weekly bosses, you'll see 60 gets us 300. So this is where you go to be able to uh, ascend your characters. Make sure you keep in mind that uh, you meet the element. So cryo for cryo registering for cryo characters. Uh, electro hypothesis for the um, uh, hi electro characters. Animo we already spoke about. Uh, here's the oceanid, which is for your uh, water characters or hydro characters. And over here is your pyro characters or your pyro registrine. Okay, so those are those are some of the elements there. Uh, the geo ones down here, the, the the cubes down here for the geo characters. So those are kind of your your, your bosses uh, to be able to send your characters. The next area is weekly bosses. Now these. There are currently two weekly bosses, and they reset uh, once a week. Uh, they reset Monday morning, or when the server resets Sunday night. Um, and you can farm it only once a week. And it will also help you get uh, character ascension material. As you can see, it costs 60 resin, but it also drops artifacts. And um, you'll see it drops artifacts here for specific sets. And it also drops these um, crafting material as well. So you need these crafting materials to be able to craft four-star weapons. So hopefully you get these when you do fight the bosses. But my tip to you guys, so here's the Storm Terror one, the other boss. Uh, as you can see, same sort of thing. Uh, as you go higher level, it uh, gives you better drops. Now, the levels here are determined based on your world level. Okay? The quality of the drop gets higher based on your world level. So the trick behind it is to really do it late in the week. So you can kind of capitalize on your world level. So world level is something I'm going to quickly explain now. It kind of aligns to your adventure rank. So you get your first world level when you break level 20. Okay? Uh, level 20 starts unlocking the world level feature. Level 25 is world level uh, 2. Level 30 is world level 3. Uh, 35 becomes world level 4. Sometimes you may need to do quests to be able to unlock your world level. If you actually click into it, it kind of aligns with your improvement in adventure rank. And it also gives you better drops. From your leyline blossoms um it also should give you better drops from those dungeons it hasn't been confirmed yet but i believe the bosses get harder therefore your drops get better that's the, what i've been told so far it's something that i'm i've speculated is that way um so yeah as you level up 
So towards the end of the week is probably when you want to do it because you can kind of capitalize your level. For example, for me, um, it is today. Today is Wednesday server time. It's going to reset Sunday. So my goal is to see if I can get to adventure rank 35 or world level 4 before I do my bosses. And if I can do that, great. I can hopefully get better drops. Okay? So that's what I'm doing there. But that covers off all the main areas of the map. Except for one last area. This is kind of the late game content. And it's at Musk Reef. It's called Spiral Abyss. Okay, Spiral Abyss is something I'm currently struggling with. Um, I'm currently stuck at like 4, four uh, Chamber 3. Um, and that's an area that you unlock. And you have to beat certain uh, chambers. Uh, chambers are like sections of a floor. And you have to beat all the floors. You have to get like 6 stars to complete the floor. By doing three chambers so you have to get like two star or higher ideally or like you can kind of sacrifice one star in one and get three star in another but you need to get a total of six stars to unlock the next four and this can be really challenging i'm stuck at floor four i haven't really tried for a while i might try again tomorrow and see if i can keep climbing but um i don't know too much about this area yet because i haven't kind of gotten much further than where i'm at now all i can see is that there is eight levels to it um i'll teleport here and i'll show you guys for now um Let's get here. Let's have a look. So let's have a look. Let's go into here. Spiral Abyss. So Spiral Abyss. Here we are. We're in it. As you can see, there's eight basic floors. You get rewards for each of these levels. So if I show you the reward preview, as you can see, you get some, some rewards in the way. You can actually get five-star equipment as well as four-star... Uh, sorry, artifacts. You get artifacts from here. You get four-star artifacts from there. Three-star artifacts from the blue ones. And uh, you actually unlock the abyssal, uh, the uh, the abyssal spire after you complete these eight areas. Okay, so right now I've actually only up to stage four, so I don't really, I can't really comment on these. There might be some guides out there from other creators, but this is the extent of the video that I'm going to go to when it comes to Spiral Abyss. Um, other information that I think that would be nice for you guys to know is about trying to progress really quickly through this game. My experiences so far is making sure, so I'm going to press the J key, making sure you're on top of your quest, so the J key kind of shows you where you are with all your quests, making sure this page is almost always empty or you're level locked. Now, when you've done all that, you can kind of, you know, I mean, if you had a lot, you can kind of go through each section if you wanted to, but you kind of want to be able to clear these quests because it gives you all the adventure experience. Okay, so I can get a total of, uh, what's it called, about 900 experience here. And is that going to push me above? Let's have a look. 900 experience isn't going to let me get to Adventure Rank 33 just yet. But you want to clear these quests as quickly as possible to kind of boost your rank. Um, and that, that helps you level up. So that's something to keep in mind of clearing your uh, quests. Quests also get you like equipment. It can also get you Primo Gems. Um, it can get you a lot, a lot of other things when it comes to the game, okay? Um, next thing to keep in mind is the uh, commissions, which is the daily quests. And you get those from the Adventure Guild. So that's what the purple symbols were in my screen. Because the day did just reset. So you'll see back in this screen here. That here are my daily quests. So I've got four daily quests. Everyone gets four a day. So you want to try to complete those every single day. Um, you get some neat rewards out of that as well. Um, then you want to also... If you honestly run out of things to do. You should be going to your Adventure Handbook. F1. And this is, this is what you want to progress through. The experience level. So right now you want to climb as high as you can. For me, I can probably only do this phase 3 because enhancing a weapon to level 70 requires adventure level 35, so I'm going to be stuck anyway. So I'm going to send one more weapon. I'm going to be happy with that. And then when I can eventually do a weapon to level 70, that's what I'm going to do. So F1 is what you press to bring up your adventurer's handbook. Um, the other areas you want to look at is when you press escape, I'm going to uh, quickly uh, explain this high level. In the shop section, uh, this is where you can buy stuff. If you want to spend money in the game, this is where you can buy, buy certain packs. This is like your uh, daily pack. It gives you a certain amount of crystals and primo gems across 30 days. In your gift shop, you'll see the same thing. You can buy a starter bundle. I don't, I don't know if these are really worth it. I haven't really looked into them. Um, but I, I would, I would use those primo gems for other summons or for purely for uh, refilling resin. Star glitter exchange are, are materials you get from when you do wishes, and it allows you to be able to buy summons. It allows you to buy characters. It allows you to buy weapons. It allows you to buy um, ascension materials. That's what all these are below here. So it's something to keep in mind. If you ever are chasing specific items, you can probably buy it from here if you're doing a lot of summons. Status exchange is another form of currency. Again, you'll see I would have bought out all my summons at the bottom. 
Um, but you also have Ascension material here as well. Um, I've got 360 sitting around because I actually think I'm going to wait for it to refresh so I can rebuy summons once again. So that's what I'm going to do with those. You can only buy a handful of those a month because they do refresh. So you kind of want to capitalize on that as much as possible. And then the last area in here is like buying uh, straight up Genesis Crystals, which is this uh, this currency here. It's a special currency, um, which you can actually convert into Primo Gems. So right now they've got a deal on where you can double up on the, the amount of crystals you get when you buy when you buy packs. So that's a pretty cool bonus. Uh, is it worth it? I don't know too much. I haven't really, I haven't really spent too much money. I haven't spent any money. I'm free to play actually. But if I was to consider spending, I think I would probably start with the uh, daily pack. It seems pretty cool because you get 2,700 Primo gems for only eight dollars Australian or five US. Okay, so that's the shop party setup. This is where you can structure your party. Um, so you can either like click on a character, you can switch them out. So if I click onto this, I can switch them out. If I didn't like the order of my characters, I can actually go to quick setup. And I can untick, and I can I can switch it around however I want. So, if I wanted um, my Venti to be in front, and I wanted to use my attackers up front, and then Barbara, my healer at the end, We're I can put it in that order. But then I go, okay, you know what? I like my Deluke being in my my number one spot, so I can actually press and hold Deluke as well, and drag him to that spot, and it moves everyone else down, and um, puts him in the front. So that's something pretty cool. Some people don't know that. You can actually rename your party at the top if you wanted to. Um, you can actually set up more parties if you wanted to. You can set up to four. Um, and that's something worth um, noting. And there's elemental resonance. You can read into this. So this is the benefits if you have double fire units, double wind units, uh, water units, and so on. So have a read through that. Depending on your party combination, that's what you can get. Uh, any four unique elements, you get elemental res. So yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, next area to look at, if I press the escape key again, you got your friends list. You have achievements, so you should be collecting these the moment you complete these, because it gives you a little bit of Primo Gems. Um, so you can do some more summons. Uh, characters. So this will give you your character book, okay? Um, then you can go into specific characters. So that's a C screen. Inventory. This is where you have your items. So you have weapons up front, then you have your artifacts, then you have your character development items. So it's like your essential materials and your experience materials. Um, then you have your food, so you need food in this game to be able to keep your characters healed up. Then you have your materials to uh, cook or um, create weapons. That's what go into here. Then you have your quest materials, so you just get a whole lot of random books. Um, and then you have precious items, which is like where they store your animoculus, geoculus. I have some traps here if I wanted to. Masterless star glitter. Um, you see the summons, and you see these sigils. These sigils you can actually use to buy stuff in the souvenir shop. And you can buy um, character ascension materials that you might be missing. As well as like some weapon crafting material, which is pretty important. And you find these when you open up chests. You can find them in random places. You can find them uh, doing quests. So you actually end up with quite a lot of them. And fragile resin allows you to restore resin as well. So you can actually go into here, click on use, and it will give you 50 resin at the top. So right now I have 62 resin. It will put me at 120. I think I don't think it allows you to overcap. I might be wrong on that. Don't quote me. I've never tried to overcap it. That's something to also remember. Um, if we go back into the escape menu, the other aspects to remember is if you have an issue with like hotkeys, all the stuff you need is over here. So quests, your F1 key um, will go here. Um, oh, sorry, F, yeah, F1 key, your map is your M key, your events, I usually press the key button at the top. Handbook is also F1. Uh, quest may not be F1, actually. Quest, I usually just click uh, through the handbook. Oh, no, quest the J. So, quest the J, okay? Quest the J, M for map, um, events, handbook, wish, wish is F3, battle pass, this is a pretty cool aspect as well. There is a battle pass that you unlock at level 20. And you can actually... There's a free-to-play battle pass, which is the top one. And you can actually buy a battle pass as well. So if I click on unlock, there is stuff you get. Um, which costs that much money. These are the payment types. Um, let's leave. I, <laughs> I was trying to see if I can scroll, but I hit the wrong button. So you actually get some extra stuff if you buy the bigger one. A um, little bit of a discount. And uh, this is what you get when you uh, buy the battle pass and you get a weapon at the end when you get to level 30. So it's pretty cool. Battle pass goes up to level 50. So you get some rewards on the way. Um, there are battle pass quests that you get daily missions and also weekly missions. So make sure you're on top of these. 
um, and there are like overall missions as well. So keep all that in mind. Um, you want to be on top of the battle pass as best as you can. Co-op mode means I can play with my friends if I wanted to. Uh, we can do missions together and we can also help each other farm. Be careful with co-op mode because there are a lot of looters. People like to come and farm your ores because crafting materials are hard to come by. They respawn very slowly. So people might want to come and join your party. So you might want to avoid people you don't know. They might be just jumping in to steal all your, um, your rare resources. So be careful of that. You can chat to people and there's a feedback session. But um, that is pretty much all I wanted to cover when it came to this video. Hopefully it addressed a lot of the questions you guys had. I know it seemed like a lot of information and I might actually break it down in the future to be a bit more detailed and a bit more advanced about what you're looking for in specific characters or ways to beat certain bosses as well. Um, but hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please let me know. If I just mumbled a lot, please also let me know I'm new to YouTube, relatively new to YouTube. I'm trying to get my content more out there on YouTube. I am a Twitch streamer naturally. So doing this on Twitch is a lot easier. So if you guys have any feedback, I'm always open to it. Um, if you did like it and you want to see more content, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, let me know what I can work on. If you think my content's good and you want to see more, please let me know. If there's anything you want to see in particular, like how to beat certain bosses, I can also work on that. And so I'll do that for you guys as well. So let me know what you guys think and I'm going to do my best for you guys. Anyway, YouTube, that's going to do me. I hope the video is what you guys expected. And I'm going to be speaking to you guys next time in the next video. Take care and goodbye for now.